Well, yeah, thanks very much, Don. Um, and yes, as Don alluded to, I live in Lakeland, and I'd like to describe Lakeland as just this side of Papua New Guinea. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be talking to you today about bananas. Uh, I just want to say a few things. First up, um, all bananas in Australia are grown from Australian producers. There are no imported bananas here, and we are working hard to keep it that way. Um, my topic is on banana fruit quality, biosecurity and waste management. Um, I must firstly thank Hal and uh, my sponsors, Horticulture Australia, and also the levy payers from the banana industry, for without them I wouldn't be here today. Also, I want to thank um, my brother Martin, who kept the dream alive back home while I was away overseas, and also a big thanks to my parents, Tom and Trish. Um, I suppose they're the best parents I've ever got. Um, as you can see here, we do we do bananas, but we also do seed production at Lakeland. Um, on the Tablelands farm, we do macadamias, and we just just started with blueberries. So my study topic. Um, basically, the banana industry has two main threats, and that's imports uh, and basically disease. And they go hand in hand. So we need to keep bananas out, keep imports out, and hopefully that way we'll keep disease at bay as well. So my aim was to look at fruit quality, for if we're not going to have imports in this country, we need to make sure that consumers get the best quality banana possible. Um, so how do we stack up against it? other countries when it comes to banana production. Um, I want to look at that more closely. Also biosecurity, what are some biosecurity risks that we face as an industry and as growers. And the main issue there at the moment is Panama Tropical Race 4. Um, it's a basically a fusarium wilt. It gets into the banana and yeah, the banana dies very quickly. It's soil borne and it cannot be controlled. Once you have Panama in your soil, you have it pretty well for life. Uh, in the 1950s, Panama Race 1 wiped out the then uh, number one banana variety, Gross Michael, and, uh, and Cavendish variety replaced it. Uh, the last thing was waste management. Uh, what mechanisms can we employ to deal with waste from our farming systems? When we have waste from the packing shed, what do we do with it? Um, and also waste, not only organic waste, but waste when it comes to plastics. We use a lot of plastics in the banana industry, and I dare say it's going to get worse after travelling overseas. I, went, I started off by going to Taiwan. Taiwan, I went there because they have an excellent plant breeding program. Um, for the last 30 years, they've been trying to select for resistant or tolerant varieties to Panama. Um, they're achieving tolerant varieties at the moment, uh, but then by no means have they got a resistant variety. Um, it just simply doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, these tolerant varieties, they take about seven years um, throughout the process by the time they become commercially available. So there's quite a lengthy process to, to trying to discover uh, bigger and better varieties. Um, thing, other thing I, I, I picked up on in Taiwan was the use of, of plastics uh, within the bunch, protecting the bunch, of the, the bunch hands and the fingers from each other. Uh, it seems a little bit ironic, but nature's already given us, uh, given the banana its own plastic outer cover, if you like, uh, but we, we now have to protect that as well, so it looks perfect on the shelf. Next step was China. China, I was very impressed by their bunch protection system. When at bagging stage, they go through and they will deflower the bunch, they will then put tissue on top of the flower so that the sap doesn't stain, stain the outer skin so that when it arrives on the shelf it looks good. Um, they also go to many lengths on paper or plastic between the hands, newspaper on top to stop sunburn, um, the polystyrene sheath on the outside to insulate it from the cold, and then Finally, the, the blue paper bag, uh, plastic bag over the top. Um, they can spend a lot of time on the bunch and protecting the bunch because they have cheaper labour. We, we find this hard and we struggle with this in, in, in our industry in Australia. Um, they have a very unique way of picking and packing bananas, something that 
I've never seen before. Uh, what they were doing is they would basically bring the bananas two by two uh, to the mobile packing shed, which was at the end of the road, uh, just on the headland. They had concrete headlands everywhere. The semi trailer rocked up with everything that they need to pack that through cartons, troughs, um, vacuum cleaners, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, they unpacked the shed and then just repacked it with the, with the fruit. No cold, no cold storage, nothing, straight up, straight down to the markets. Uh, the, some farms had two people for two bunches, other farms, as I'm demonstrating here, had two bunches per one person, and this person tended to be uh, a little old lady about yay big, and, uh, and, and she'd just slip on, under the bamboo um, pipe, lift about two inches off the ground, and then, and then scram like this, <laughs> all the way to the headland as quickly as possible. I'd love to see the, uh, or hear the conversation at the end of the day when, uh, when the husband asks what's for dinner. <laughs> From a very immature supply chain in China uh, to the UK, which has a very, very mature uh, supply chain, these guys, have, uh, they're, they're achieving enviable fruit quality on the shelf. Um, it's pretty well picture perfect, as you can see down here. 75% um, of all bananas that are traded in the world go to either UK, Europe or North America. Uh, so these guys, when it comes to uh, exporting and, and growing fruit, they know how to do it. A um, couple of interesting points: they basically transport all their bananas by by, uh, by shipping. And another point that I thought was uh, very important to look at was the the size carton they use. Overseas, it's a 17 kilo carton, 17 80 kilo carton. Um, here in Australia, we use a 30 kilo carton. Um, our carton struggles to protect the fruit. Generally, when you stack stack the cartons on top of each other, the the fruit is holding the next carton up, not the box, which is just a little bit bizarre. But anyways, we that's an area I think that, that our industry can can uh, can improve on um, by looking at, at at what they do overseas, specifically this this type of carton. This is the main carton that people use. There's there's other flavors. There's there's a few smaller ones. There's different shapes because different different retailers want their own want their own box and, and so forth. But looking at this carton a little bit more closely is the way that it's packed, um, the ventilation on it as well, uh, the big hole on top of the box and on the bottom of the box allows great ventilation vertically and also on the side of the box great ventilation uh, horizontally as well. Uh, yeah. We basically we need to move to something like this for our industry if if we want to minimise the amount of waste in our supply chain here in Australia. The next country, Martinique. Now it's a small French island in the Caribbean. Um, this this country was fascinating not only for the great rum that they can produce. Um, their their carton erecting machines that I saw at one farm was was just brilliant, very efficient. They had two two lids and one base going through the one machine. Uh, generally you'll have, you know, when you when, when you pack fruit you're going to have your first grade and then you'll have your second quality um, fruit. So this was just a very efficient and it appears as a, it's a very simple um, machine to use as well. And I, I think we need, to, yeah, we need to move towards something like this for labour savings. Uh, the, next, the next thing that I found very fascinating um, because Martinique is so small is its emphasis on sustainability and what they're doing for the environment. So one thing that their producers are required to do is in the packing sheds there's generally a lot of post-harvest fungicide use um, because bananas, once you pick them, take about two to four weeks before the consumer actually gets the banana uh, home. Uh, so they're using the, the fungicide that they use in the sheds they're having to dispose of it into these evaporation pans essentially. The water evaporates off, the chemical is left on the on the disposable tarp inside. They take this tarp, roll it up, put it in the container and send it back to France for recycling. Um, because we're part of the Commonwealth, I figured how the project's done, let's just send our waste back to the UK. <laughs> um, again, the producers in Martinique, they're using in bunch protection. Spending the money in the field, doing it, doing it properly out in the field. In this case, they're using uh, polystyrene um, slips in between the hands, deflowering, and 
and uh, of course bagging. The other thing that, that has to be noted here is their different uh, harvesting system. They're using these trailers here, which are very good at protecting each bunch individually from each other. Um, there's a grab at the top that, that holds the stalk here, and then these white things are their foam pads, and they stop the bunches from bouncing around and hitting each other. Uh, going forward, I think producers in Australia, if they were to start fresh, I think they could, they could look at this system as, as an alternative to what we use now, which is essentially taking a banana bunch which spends its whole life hanging from a tree, and we think it's a good idea to sit it on a trailer <laughs> against the rest. Somewhere where we can move forward. Now, South America. South America, third world country, yeah, sure, but these guys are professional banana farmers. They know what they're doing. Um, a lot can be learned from these guys. Uh, they're doing great things with fruit and bunch protection, but also when it comes to waste management, um, their whole waste management system, all the plastics, the banana, the banana bags, the plastics in the bunch, the string that is used to tie the trees together so they don't fall over in the wind, um, all of that is, is collected and recycled. Uh, also, they're, they're using a lot of footpaths for their, for their infield traffic, uh, going from, from one paddock to the next. Um, this does require a lot of maintenance, uh, but it's something that, that in Australia we need to look at because it's these sort of systems and mechanisms that are going to slow down any uh, disease encroachment. Uh, finally, when it came to bunch protection in South America, I was just blown away by the attention to detail some farms were using this harvesting tool here, whereby where, as, they were, as they were harvesting the bunch, they would sit the bunch between this point and this point horizontally. So that tool here goes on the shoulder, and then the bunch sits between here, completely eliminating any neck injury that you might get when bananas are rested on the shoulder and taken from the tree to the cable work. Um, yeah, predominantly South America, uh, Central America, Central, um, Central America, like Costa Rica and these sort of countries, um, cableway is used. So again, the bunch is taken from the tree where it hangs, and then it's taken to a, a cableway. Some people call it flying fox. Hang it up on the cableway and drag it all the way back to the shed. Malaysia, uh, Malaysia. I, I visited Malaysia to look at um, basically the use of. Well, when it comes to it comes to waste and the waste from the packing shed, um, taking that waste, inoculating, inoculating it with a biology, and then putting it back on the farm. Uh, not only that, we looked at uh, taking oh, well, similar sorts of biology and basically the concept of using the, bio, the good biology to fight the bad, or basically outpopulate the bad in the field. So these sort of systems can be used, I think. Um, collectively in a suppressive system to, to, to keep disease and its, its, its aggression a little bit slowed down. So going moving away from the monoculture systems that we tend to have a lot now, just strictly bananas in the banana row, growing, growing biology from the soil, including uh, cup crops and all these sorts of things. Um, now, also in Malaysia, I visited a very interesting company that were doing some great stuff when it comes to converting waste plastic back into diesel. Um, so they would do this by taking the plastic, they would melt it down, um, and then basically reheat it to the correct temperature, and then uh, cool it down and, and catch, catch diesel. The guy that picked me up from the, from the motel, um, to take me down to, to have a look at where they were making this. Um, he picked me up in his just Isuzu um, ute and it was powered by, um, by the diesel that, he, that he's made from plastic. Um, okay, to finish up, fruit quality. What are the things that we need to do here in Australia? Discipline, timing. Everything that we do needs to be done on time, needs to be done well. We need to do more in bunch protection. Spend the money in the field so we're not spending it in the packing shed. Protect the bunch, protect the bunch, protect the bunch. The shed is not a hospital. Um, and the last thing there is improved carbon design for ventilation and transport. Biosecurity awareness. This has got to be at a farm level, community level, and government level. 
we need to work together with with industry and and government to to come up basically to just push the awareness of biosecurity and how important it is. Um, the biggest thing there is that there is no variety that is resistant to Panama TR4 and there's a long hard road ahead to, to find a, a solution there. Waste management, again industry and government we need to work together to find a local and efficient recycling uh, system, uh, basically recycling plants down, well coming from the top of Queensland, the nearest recycling plants in Brisbane. 2,000 kilometres away, freight kills it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that thing, that thing goes across many industries. Um, potential to add value to, to our plastic waste. Let's, let's keep an eye on this really innovative space and keep it in mind in the future. Um, fruit waste, keep it to a minimum. As I said, the shed is not a hospital. Do the work in the field. And if you have waste from the, from the shed, get it back on the paddock in a timely manner. The same day that you, that you pick and pack, put it straight back out there. Uh, apart from that, thank you very much for listening and those of you that were sleeping, thanks for not snoring.